Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's Worship and the Word. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you here today. It is our hope, it is our prayer that you will experience the presence of Jesus Christ over your life in this moment for such a time as this. Let's begin this morning's worship through Scripture, Psalm 105, which calls us together to be unified in one, receiving from the Lord the word that says this. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. So this morning, we want to focus on the work of God, what he has done in the past, what he is doing right now, presently, and what he will continue to do because he holds all things, especially the future, in his hands. The Madison multi-site leadership team, we have been working together to develop an outdoor Thanksgiving service that is taking place next Wednesday afternoon. I'm going to swing things over to our point pastor, Pastor Joy Bonima of the North Campus, who has an open invitation for us all. Check it out. Hey Madison, you might recognize these stones as those that are piled outside the square campus. Every year, in the days leading up to Thanksgiving, these and other stones get piled right in the center of the sanctuary in preparation for the all-site Thanksgiving service. They are Ebenezer stones, reminiscent of when Samuel lifted up a stone and said, thus far, God has brought us. This year, given all the COVID restrictions, there's no way that all three of our sites can gather indoors at the Square Campus. But that doesn't mean that we can't gather. That doesn't mean that we can't give God thanks for all of his goodness in this year. So we've been thinking, how can we organize an all-site Thanksgiving service that will be simple, safe, at least with respect to COVID restrictions, because I don't think worship is ever meant to be safe, significant, and sacred. And so here's what we would like to invite you to do. In the days, weeks leading up to Thanksgiving, find a stone, a rock that's big enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Heft it. Feel its weight, its coldness, its hardness. Think back over this year. In what ways does that stand in for the things that have been weighty and cold and hard this year? Maybe you even want to find a sharpie and begin writing down those things on one side of this rock but then on the other hand in those same areas how have you felt the weight of god's glory what are his rock solid promises that you are holding on to and maybe you want to go ahead and write those down and then on the day before thanksgiving the wednesday before from three in the afternoon until seven in the evening, any time in that stretch, to come here to the square campus and to take your rock and to place it on this pile of rocks as a way of saying, God, thus far you have led me. God, this has been a year, but you are my rock and you are my refuge. Jesus, you are our cornerstone who is at work even in 2020. Staff from all three sites will be here to greet you, to welcome you, to pray with you, or to simply stand as you mark this year and saying, God, you are our rock of help. You are our refuge. Will you join us as together we say, Lord, you are good and your mercies endure forever, even in 2020. Good morning, good morning. Why don't you just, for one second, go in your comment section and just say good morning to somebody. If you see somebody, tag them. If you know somebody that needs to be on this live stream this morning, tag them in this live stream. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. What a privilege it is for us to worship and to honor Him with the fruit of our lips and the clapping of our hands and right where you are, I want to 
challenge you. If you're in your living room, if you're in your car, you're in your office, wherever you are, come on in and worship with us. Come on, put in the conversation. Let's worship together. Put that in your conversation. Let's worship together. Let's worship together. The song says, Again, I say rejoice. Let's sing together.
Good morning, Madison family. Uh, good to see you from a distance. And uh, I'm here just to spend a couple minutes in prayer. And uh, we're going to uh, look at Philippians 4 and pray a couple verses out of Philippians 4 this morning to give us some hope uh, and some encouragement this morning. Amen? Amen. The word from uh, Philippians 4 says, <clears throat> Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Holy Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for how you are in us and through us and guiding us. Lord, we want to lift up to you uh, those who are sick in our communities. We want to lift up to you, Jesus, um, the health of our communities and ask that you will bring uh, healing uh, and certainly a vaccine. Uh, for COVID, Jesus, we want to ask, Lord, that during these uh, these difficult times, uh, we've got the health issues, we've got uh, political divisions, um, we've got church issues, uh, we've got family crises, we've got uh, families uh, struggling. Uh, Lord, we ask for your peace, Lord. We ask for your understanding. Um, we ask for your encouragement, Jesus. And uh, we, we need you. We need you through every step of the way. So, Lord, may the words of Philippians 4 be on our heart uh, this week. Lord, may we rejoice in you always, Lord. May we rejoice. May we, um, your gentleness, uh, be evident uh, through us, Lord. May we know that you are near. May we not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, Lord, may through prayer and request, may we bring it to you, Jesus, with thanksgiving, knowing that you will hear us, Lord. And may your peace, Jesus, which we know is above all understanding, may it guard our hearts and may it guard our minds in Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you so much, Elder Ryan, for leading us into a time of prayer. And we want to continue on in our worship through our tithes and offerings. We're a tithing church, which means that we love to give God's way. We believe that giving is an act of worship. And so let's continue to worship the Lord together. And you can pursue online giving in the link descriptions that are below. And thank you, everyone, for continuing to partner with us in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, as I was praying this week in preparation for this service, just this morning, I was over at 415 Franklin and the future home of the Franklin campus. Guys, they're on the home stretch. They're essentially working on finish work to complete the project so that we are prepared to move in a place, a home for the Franklin campus to preach Christ, to worship Christ and to disciple in Christ. And as I was there, this is Friday morning, I started to take some video and some pictures as well. And I wanted to relay these your way, just as a way to capture and to picture and really imagine what is right on the horizon for us as a church. So please take these in, see these photos and some videos as well, and then receive the word of the Lord from Pastor Daryl, our Square Campus pastor, as we continue to worship together. Thank you so much.
Good morning, Madison. My name is Pastor Daryl Delaney. I'm the campus pastor here at Madison Church at the Square Campus. It's good to be here with you online here. And usually I say in the house of the Lord because usually there you are all sitting here and you can say amen in person. But since COVID has hit, we haven't had any um, services in person for quite some time now. And I just want to give you a little bit of update on what's happening with that. Uh, since we have a COVID-19, a real regathering task force that we have been working with and consulting with. There are medical professionals on that team and there are ministers on that team, elders on that team and staff members on that team. And what we found is that we'll plan something and then because of what happens, we'll have to change what we plan. So originally when the numbers were going down and they were saying it's okay to have a hundred people in the building, uh, we were gonna have some services. And then the numbers went up and they changed it to 10 inside. And so then we said, okay, we can't have services and large gatherings inside. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have these small groups. So we have a lot of space in this church. We could have had a group in this room, a group upstairs, a group downstairs, um, but then the numbers kept going up. So we had originally wanted to do house churches. We wanted to do um, small gatherings for people who felt comfortable in line with what we're streaming. There could be, that it could have been some people who might have been able to meet in person, but we have been disappointed with the fact that the numbers keep going up and we wanna be safe. The last thing that we wanna do is be a church that opens up and then cases start coming in because we opened up. And the ones that were open, they have been encouraged by Kent County to close. And they have by since then gone virtual, so they're kind of where we're at now. And it's really difficult and it's really challenging. We've attempted some things behind the scenes that you may or not have known about, and we apologize for not communicating to that to you sooner. But we do have plans when these things subside. And we're planning on having the house churches, which are small gatherings within your um, living context, we'll have signups for. But we'll also be doing other creative things, but we're trying to do our best. So bear with us as we try to navigate these weird and uncharted waters. We're doing what we can, and we're trying to provide things for you so that you can be a witness and a disciple wherever you are. Um, Contrary to popular opinion, we're still called to make disciples. We're still called to be disciples. And that's like exactly what I'd like to talk about today. So as we get into the word of God, I'd like us to stand for the reading of God's word. Um, coming from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20 and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So in body or in spirit, if you're able to, please stand. We're going to read God's word from Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20 and Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Hear the word of the Lord. And then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and baptize and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I will be with you always even to the end of the age. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Please respond by saying, Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for the point you bring us in our walk with you, God. And Lord, we look to you as the only help we know. Lord, we pray that you would continue to walk with us during these times. It is not easy for any of us. We're, we're being shaken out of our comfort zones and we're being forced into a situation that is beyond our control. But you are in control. 
You are in complete control of every situation. You're not in heaven twirling your thumbs, wondering what's going to happen next, but you know exactly what you're doing. You had a date on the calendar for this very moment. You're the author and the finisher of our faith and also the sustainer of it. And you're faithful to complete the work you started in us. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to preach this word. May it deposit in our hearts and our souls. May it nourish us, may it strengthen us and give us the equip, equip us to be blessed, the blessing of someone outside of ourselves, bringing you glory. I wrote some things down, but if your spirit doesn't breathe on them, they won't become spirit and they won't become life. So, Lord God, help us to be doers of this word and not just hearers, deceiving ourselves. And help us, Lord God, to trust you even when we don't understand all the details of what is happening. Lord God, thank you for this word. May it nourish our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. So in the most unpleasant of circumstances, Jesus speaks to his disciples. They may feel in this situation when he's speaking that all is lost because they thought he was going to come and restore Israel. They thought he was going to come and be the new David, King David, who united the kingdoms and had this glory. He, they thought he was going to overthrow the Roman government. They thought he was going to set Israel back on high, make Israel great again. They thought he was going to do that. Instead, he came for a kingdom that is not of this world. And he died to pay the price for our sins. And so when they thought they were going to win, they found that they felt they lost because Jesus died. And then Jesus resurrect and comes to them and tells them the mission continues. Even though I have died, it has not stopped the mission. Actually, the death was part of the mission. And I'm going to give you the power to go and be and make disciples of all nations. He also gives them the power by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. And so I want to talk to us today about the fact that we still have a job to do. As believers who believe in a God who is in control of all circumstances, as a believer who believes that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior over all these things and that he is not done with the mission that he has called us to. We still have a job to do now. I want to say before I begin that I want to acknowledge the fact that life is hard right now. I'm not what I'm going to say is not designed to dismiss, discredit or denounce what you have been experiencing as hardship during this year. I'm not relegating it, your expression of that discomfort and that challenge. I'm not relegating what you feel and how you express that as whining. It is not whining. It is not complaining. It is not pity party. It is valid. It is valid for you as a believer to name that this world is broken and that life is hard and that change is challenging. So I want to say it first and foremost. I'm not here to dismiss any of what you have experienced because what you have experienced is valid and important. I would like to offer a perspective that from Scripture shows that, yes, that life is happening. And yes, we still have a job to do. Because God has called us to be disciples who love and follow Jesus, become more and more like him in our attitudes and actions and seek to make other disciple makers who do the same. And that principle, that command is not it doesn't have an asterisk that says when things are hard, you don't have to. Or when things are difficult, you don't need to. Or when things when suffering happens, when challenge happens, when brokenness happens, that you don't have to do that. The mission remains the mission. And so I want us to understand that God has called us to make disciples no matter what the circumstance may be. And there could be plenty of obstacles that could be in our way. Sometimes we get distracted. Before COVID hit, I could distract myself with a whole lot of things. I could just get on Netflix and watch all the episodes of my favorite show or I could go over here and hang out with these friends or um, I could go 
on vacation, meet these people, hang out with these people, just go to random places, walking around in the mall or whatnot. And sometimes that stuff is necessary. Sometimes that stuff is good. But if I use those things as opportunities to disengage and not finish, not actually pay attention to what it means to live as a disciple or make disciples, then they become distractions. So I could use watching Netflix all day as an excuse to not get in the word. Or I could use hanging out with my friends all day as an excuse to not do the deep work of examining myself like scripture tells me. Or I could do this activity, that activity, and ignore the fact that I'm supposed to actually witness to someone at work. I could go along with whatever jokes they're telling or whatever, but I'm not being a light or a witness um, in far, as far as my words and my actions at my workplace or my campus or wherever I go to work or school. Now, another way that there could be an obstacle on understanding the fact that God has called us to the mission of making disciples and being disciples is a is that we're not processing the current situation. So these things are all happening. How are you doing with that? There's political unrest still, even though I thought it was going to be done on November 3rd. There is racial tension still. And the bad news is it's going to be like that till Jesus comes. And there's brokenness all over this world. There's COVID-19 still going raging. How are you doing with that? Are you processing where you are? Are you processing how you feel? Are you processing what God might be up to in your heart? Let me give you a little bit of an insight here. COVID-19 didn't cause a lot of the problems that we see. COVID-19 exposed some of the problems that we see. Let me give you an example. There are, there, there are situations where we need to learn how to grow together as a community. As a believing community, as a beloved community like the Acts 2 church, we're supposed to walk or walk together, have everything in common, bear one another's burdens, um, devote ourselves to prayer and teaching and breaking bread together. Now, because of the individualistic society that we live in in the United States, that was already hard. But COVID didn't cause the brokenness and separation and isolation that some of us feel. It did not cause the feeling of not belonging and not feeling like connected. It didn't cause that. It exposed it because now because we have to stay at home and we are restricted and we can't go these places. It is even worse now, but it has been revealed that it was already there. COVID exacerbated that problem. So that can be an obstacle. And I got to gotta be frank with you. Um, church programs and church ministries they are not coming back anytime soon because we're trying to be wise and we're trying to be safe. And you need to know as well that when they do come back, they will be different. Things will be changed because we will be in a different season. We'll be in a new year. We'll be in a new place. And so how are you doing with that? Some of us have been hurt and some of us have been disappointed because we have been connected to this edifice and what happens in it for so long that when it has been removed, we have a crisis. I just want to say that you're not evil if you feel that way. You're not a sinner if you feel that way. And it's normal to feel that way. But God has called us to a mission. And the mission is bigger than this edifice, this building, this space. The mission that he's called us to is still 
important and must continue. When we come back from COVID, we will be doing things differently because we've had to adjust. Type adjust into your chat right there. Adjust is something that we've had to do over and over again for the past seven, eight months, or maybe even longer for some of us. Things have changed. And things will continue to change. Change isn't good and it isn't bad. It's just different. It takes adjustment. To walk into changes, to make disciples and be disciples in this season will take an adjustment because we're not going to be able to do it the way we were doing it before the restrictions and the lockdown and before this disease pandemic went crazy. We must understand that change is part of normal life. Now, there are some things that do change and there are some things that don't change. Here's one of the things that changes. You and I, we, we change. If something happens to us, it changes who we are and how we've responded. Especially if it's traumatic. All right. So let's just say I'm a boxer. And I go in the ring for the first time and I got an opponent. I've been training and I've been getting ready and the training was hard, but I made it through and now I'm here. And I get that first hard punch from. From. From my opponent. The change comes for me when I receive that blow from that opponent. Because I have to adjust so that I don't get hit like that again. Now, that adjustment happens physically because I'm going to move. But it could happen emotionally and and inside psychologically, too. I'm thinking about what if I get hit again or I'm thinking about I need to be proactive to get out the way. Either way, I got to make an adjustment in the match or I'm going to keep getting hit in the same place at the same time. Circumstances hit us kind of like that. COVID hit us hard. Racism, again, hit us hard. Political tensions hit us hard. And fill in the blank. There are other things that are going on in your own life. Maybe you know someone who's been affected by COVID-19. Maybe you know someone who's died. Maybe you know that you couldn't graduate like you wanted to because they weren't gathering any graduations together to do ceremonies or your wedding has changed because you wanted to invite a whole bunch of people. Now you only can invite a few people or you can't do your wedding yet. Or you have other things that are going on that involve family or significant milestones in your life. These blows have hit and it has changed you. These things do change. And we have to take some time at this point to examine how we're doing with that. Because when circumstances beyond your control are happening, we have a way to we have we feel some type of way about that. Some of us get angry. Some of us get sad. Some of us get hopeless. Some of us get irritated, frustrated. Some of us, they just we just get cynical. I don't care, whatever. Just have a whatever attitude. Yeah. And that's hard. I remember one time. This is a circumstance beyond my control. If uh, when I when I injured my knee. I was playing basketball. And then I tore the ligament in my my left knee. And, and in the weeks after the surgery, I'm sitting at home and I am angry. I'm sad. I can't do for myself. I need help doing everything, getting dressed, going to the bathroom, everything. I need help with everything. And there are nights I'm sitting up awake and I'm angry that I can't do what a lot of the things I could do. 
some of us are upset because we feel like that. We cannot do what we would like to do or what we used to do or what we could do before. And that brings emotions out. It's time to examine those. Because for circumstances that aren't going to change anytime soon, you are going to change. The circumstances affect you. And you have to process that. The good news is you don't have to process it alone. But you do have to process it because this is changing you. COVID has changed us. The way we respond to people, the way we interact with people. It's kind of like everybody's got leprosy. In the, old, in the, old, in the New Testament, they, they had these people who had these skin diseases that called leprosy. And whenever they came around, people, they would have to holler unclean, unclean, so that everybody would know. And they would move to the side and, and they would st stay away from them. If they came into contact with them, they had to do purifying washings and stuff. It sounds a lot like COVID, where everybody is who's infected has been deemed unclean. And even though we are not all infected, there are some that have no symptoms. So everybody's kind of trying to be safe, trying to flatten the curve. Circumstances and situations like this bring change. We also know that there are things that do not change. Our God does not change. Our God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And our God is because our God is able to do anything. He is not uh, freaking out about all this. He's not uh, losing his mind over all this. We might freak out, but he's never freaking out. And the mission that he gave us is still intact. Like he gave us marching orders to be and make disciples. And he wants that job done. And so my prayer is that we could allow ourselves to process the challenges that we face right now. But we also need to focus because he's calling us to be disciples right where we are. I've been talking about this. To be a disciple who loves and follows Jesus becomes more and more like them in their attitudes and actions and seeks to make other disciple makers who do the same. You need to do that in the places you spend the most of your time. We spend our time at home. We spend our time at school, job or campus. We spend our time in extracurricular activities and we spend our time in social networks. We are the church. We are the church, not the building. So we're supposed to be a light and a witness in all of those places. And God gives us the power by his spirit to do just that. It's not easy, but we're still called to it. Now, if you were to ask me what I see, I could tell you if I'm thinking about how God is able to do anything and I'm thinking about how God can help us through these challenging times and how God still has a job for us to do. And you ask me in light of those, what do you see, Pastor Daryl? Type, what do you see, Pastor Daryl, in, um, in the chat? I'll tell you what I see. I see intentional discipleship communities, whether the building is open or closed. I see people being a light and a witness wherever they may find themselves, even if they have to share their faith in a socially distanced way. I see people training other people to be that light and witness. What else do I see? I see people sharing their faith, even while they're washing their hands, even when they're not touching their face, even when they're being socially distant with the hand sanitizer. They're still sharing their life and faith. I see people using social media as the new Roman road. I say Romans road. So like so like I need to tell you this. The Roman road is the 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 Hellenization of Greeks and, and going all over the world. Back in the time when Paul was a missionary, the gospel spread like wildfire because the Greeks, the Romans had allowed the Romans had took over the known world and they had uh, assimilated these Greek speaking people everywhere. And they allowed Greek to be spoken in these places. And because Paul knew Greek, he could speak it in wherever he needed to go and spread the gospel. 
So that Roman road, if you will, is what he used to communicate the gospel. And it was the fullness of time that God chose to spread it all over the world because Greek was a common language in the known world. Now, the digital age that we con we find ourselves in now, where the Internet is almost everywhere on the planet, is the new Roman road to me. I could post a video here and people in the other side of the world can pick it up and watch it. If I'm preaching the gospel or if I'm praying or if I'm sharing anything, anything goofy, um, they will go online. And that can be seen anywhere. They have computers and Internet coverage. It's interesting how God can use that to even get his word out in a digital way. Some of us have had a learning curve when it comes to all this technology, but the technology is not going anywhere and God can use it. If we're being intentional disciples, what else do you see, Pastor Dare? I see people creating spaces for truth to be told. Deep examination in their own hearts to happen and accountability happening in better communities. I see people not waiting for the institution to give them everything, but for them to start something, even if it's not perfect or complete or professional. They're not waiting for the institution to give them everything, but they are actually willing to start something, even if it's small, even if it's imperfect even if it's not done by a professional with X amount of years of training. I see church, I see a church emerging from this pandemic that understands how important time, hugs, and being fully present with people has become. I see a church following the leading of the Holy Spirit that is able to look in the mirror and see how complicit it has been to the systemic racism in this country and is willing to do better. I see a church that's not willing to be divided by partisanship or elections, but knows that its true identity of a Christian is found in Christ alone. I see a church that's not afraid to speak truth to power, not afraid to confront sin, not afraid to forgive unforgivable people, not shy in speaking up for righteousness, not concerned about what it might lose, but what it has already gained in Christ is priority. I see a church that's willing to repent for its past mistakes and not spend its entire existence looking back at glory days and see what God wants to do revival in now. And in the future, I see a church that's willing to sacrifice what we have been for what he is now calling us to be and not sit on the laurels of what it has done in the annals of history, even though those were good things. I see a church that Christ leads, that humbly serves, that gently encourages that courageously multiplies, that spreads faster than COVID cases. This is the church we're called to be, y'all. This is the goal. And we are far from it. And we can't get there unless we get there together. Yes, we have issues, but through Christ, we can get there. It is a worthwhile goal. It is essential to our developing into mature disciples. We still have a job to do, y'all. Let's focus. Let's refocus. Let's allow God to do the inner work that he has prepared us to do in the first place. Let's allow God to re-enlist us in his grand mission of being and making disciples. I'll leave you with this. This is a real challenging time. And during this time, we decided to homeschool. But I'm seeing light, little glimmers of hope in homeschooling. Homeschooling has been great for us, a good fit for this time in life and necessary in our home. Our kids are starting to understand the connections between what God is doing and what they're learning and with our communication to them. So when we're teaching a lesson about a devotion that has to do with God teaching us something, they will see connections 
in everyday life after that devotion that points back to that same thing. And that is how we are being and making disciples in our home. We're just sitting around the table explaining what God has done in our own testimonies to our kids. And we're connecting it to their practical lessons of life. So when my daughter says, I don't know how to write this number. She's in first grade, she's learning how to write our numbers. And I say, well, how does that make you feel? And she said, well, I feel bad because I don't know what to do. And I said, well, it's a good opportunity to pray then, isn't it? She said, yeah. And so I said, would you pray? And she goes, Jesus, will you please help me with my writing? I said, who, who actually gave you the ability to write? She's like, God. I said, yeah. You think he could help you with this? She's like, yeah. So then she prayed. And then she, after she prayed, she said, God, will you help me in that way? And then she wrote it and it was done correctly. I was like, see, now you just need a little repetition to go with that. But it did something for her. She's like, I asked God to help me with something. And he helped me with something. When I'm scared, I could ask him. When I'm down, when I could ask him. When I'm afraid, when I'm angry, when, I'm, when I need help, I could ask him. We're, we're solidifying that in them. And so sometimes we pray prayers like that. Where we're like, oh, God. Will you please help? I don't know how I'm supposed to ask for help, but but if we if we're real about where we feel there, then that's a deeper moment in our discipleship. We grow in our stage of faith. So my prayer is that we would, as believers, remember what we're called to. We are called to be disciples who love and follow Jesus, who become more and more like him in our attitudes and actions and seek to make other disciples who do the same. My question to you this week is how are you going to make that a reality in the midst? Not after this is done, not when things get better, but in the midst of all the crazy. How will you keep focused on the mission of being and making disciples this week? That's what I want you to talk about in the Zoom social that goes on right after this. I want you to join us right after this in the Zoom social there's a Zoom link right down in the bottom here. And I want you to join us in there because we're going to pray about that, we're going to talk about that. And we're going to encourage each other as we go through these hard times together. They're hard for us, but not too hard for our God. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to remind us that we still have a job to do. I think you got more to say about that in the future. But I thank you, Lord God, that you you are reminding us to keep the main thing the main thing. There are many things going on, God, and you understand the details of all that. And I pray, Lord God, that you help us, that you in, that's just intervene right here where we are. Thank you for the opportunity to preach it, preach your word today. And I pray, Lord God, that it would water seeds and that it would not pit, fit, make people feel diminished who are struggling right now because that was not the goal of this message. The goal of this message was to help us to refocus. The goal of this message was so that you could remind us that you're still involved in making disciples and this is your plan. So thank you for helping us to be part of that and allowing us to be part of that. In Jesus name, amen. Thank you for being here today. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel, Madison Church GR. If you subscribe and you hit the little bell, then it'll ring when it's time for the 10 o'clock a.m. every Sunday morning service that we've been doing. And like I said before, we're going right in after this to the Zoom social. It starts at 11, so be there. And we look forward to seeing you. And so we want to encourage people. We want to continue to find ways to fellowship in creative ways. Thank you for bearing with us as we navigate this. Um, and we pray that God's blessing will be upon you. As a matter of fact, I'd like to give you the blessing right now. And this is how it works. It comes from God through the preacher to you. It's spoken over your life so you can make a difference wherever you are. It's a blessing and not a prayer. So with every head up, every eye open, and every hand open, you receive it like this. 
like a gift. So that's what it is. Here it comes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God smile upon you and give you God's peace. Go forth in the knowledge that God the Father loves you. Jesus Christ has redeemed you and the Holy Spirit empowers you, even in the midst of the crazy, to be a disciple who loves and follows Jesus, becomes more and more like him in their attitudes and actions and seeks to make other disciple makers to do the same. Go in peace. Amen. God bless you.